I wanted to show you some pieces from a very unusual ceramic vessel whose form is very rare in the post-medieval repertoire of pottery industries in southern England. Um, it may not look by, like much, but in terms of rarity you are more likely to find an Anglo-Saxon penny or a Viking sword than you are to find pieces of one of these archaeologically here in the UK. Not only is it unusual, but it also sheds some light on continental influences on one of the major producers of pottery in southern England in the 16th and 17th centuries. So uh, what is it and who made it and when and why is it so interesting and important? Well, the German name for this form is a Schweinertopf, which literally translates as a pig pot. And when you see a complete one, you'll see why it gets that delightful name. Um, another German word for it is a breiter. Uh, a good English translation would be a casserole. So it's basically an enclosed form made for slow cooking. Um, it was, um, well, I found it in a scatter of kiln waste near Farnborough, and it's part of the borderware production, um, which runs along the Surrey-Hampshire borders, and thus gets its name. Um, the kiln site has been dated archaeologically to around 1625 to 1650, so we're getting a 17th century date for this piece. Um, let's have a look at a complete example, and then we'll get an idea of the form of this vessel. Um, since I don't have a captive Schweinertopf, we'll have to have a look at one in captivity in the Museum of London collection. Here on the screen we can see the complete vessel which is in the Museum of London collection. The whole thing is about 23 centimetres from end to end, so it's not a huge pot, um, but you can see the construction of it. It's a wheel thrown cylinder uh, which is then fitted with a handle at either end. Now very occasionally on some of the continental examples there'll be a little spout there I suppose for drawing off excess liquid. Um, then the top is cut out with a chamfer to um, have a lid seating and the lid is taken out and the lid also has its own little handle attached. Um, in most examples there's a little bit of pinching finger and thumb around the edge of the lid seating there as well. Um, you have four little feet there um, and you can see really why it's called a little pig pot and I imagine that pork was one of the things that would have been cooked in it. Um, in terms of diagnostic features um, an obvious one is if you imagine uh, the rim of a vessel, normally the throwing lines would be horizontal to the rim, but here of course, because it's a cylinder upended, um, the throwing lines actually travel away vertically from the rim, and that is quite a diagnostic feature of these um, particular pots. And uh, here are the shards which I found. Uh, so they're three joining shards. Um, that is obviously at the rim seating, and you can see the the uh, finger and thumb oh dear, impressions there. Uh, and that's the rim seating there. And so you can see the diagnostic lines leading vertically away from the rim. Uh, glazed inside uh, with a clear glaze that has fired yellow. Uh, white firing clay, very typical uh, of the boardware industry at this time. Um, when I first found it, I found this piece first. Uh, I did not know what sort of vessel it came from at all. Um, and it was only by looking at Jacqueline Pierce's excellent book here, um, Pots and Potters in Tudor Hampshire, that I managed to get an ID for it. Um, this is the definitive guide on the boardware industry and I'll put a link below this video uh, so you can see about that. Very well worth having in your book collection. 
uh, and I was able to identify it at this unusual form of a Schweiner top. Um, now obviously my piece being kiln waster has never been used in cooking but in the ones that have been used there is obviously a lot of sooting uh, from the feet especially up round the body of the vessel where it sits in the fire. Here's a painting by the artist Joachim Uteweil, who was working in the Netherlands in the early 17th century. And in the bottom left hand corner, you can see a little Schweinertopf hiding away, ready to be used in a rather fabulous feast that they are preparing. I mentioned that this was a very unusual vessel in the repertoire of the post medieval potters. Um, at another kiln site, uh, Borderware kiln site near Farnborough, uh, three shards were found from three different vessels. Uh, one was excavated in Reigate in Surrey, and from London we have another six shards of Schweiner Töpfer, three of which have been ascribed to the Borderware industry and three which are considered to be continental imports. And um, on top of that we have the wonderful complete vessel from the Museum of London collection. Now interestingly another Schweinertopf has been found in an excavation at Jamestown in Virginia. Now Jamestown was the first permanent English settlement in America founded in 1607 so sometime after that time someone has brought a Schweinertopf with them from England and has used it there and there's a link below to an article by Beverly Straub in which she discusses this particular vessel. So why was this vessel so unusual in the repertoire of post-medieval potters? Well basically the style of cooking which it represents was much more popular on the continent especially in the German speaking areas from Switzerland and across northern Europe uh, and in the Low Countries as well. Um, and that's where we find most of the examples. Um, working forward from the 16th to the 18th centuries, they seem to be produced. Um, but this style of cooking never actually caught on in this country, so um, it's a rare form. Um, it's very interesting because it's an example of continental influence um, on British pottery at this period, especially in the boardware industry. Um, we find several other forms uh, which are mirroring continental prototypes and uh, Jacqueline Pierce in her book has a very interesting fact that an immigrant potter is recorded in Farnborough at this time working in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. Um, his name was Herman Ragnold and we don't know where he came from, he's just down as an immigrant, uh, an alien he's described as, that is a, a foreigner. But obviously he would come from a German or a Low Countries area. And um, his family uh, become very involved in the borderware industry. Um, later generations the name is anglicised to Reynolds, um, but they're all basically part of the same family. And um, the Schweinertopf, which I found, is a very good example of that continental influence on um, this large industry there. So as these vessels were produced at least two centres in the boardware industry over a, a number of decades, um, it's fair to say they're unlikely to be experimental, um, but there must have been a very limited um, customer base because they're so rarely found archaeologically. Um, but it must have been one of the things that you could have ordered, you know, if you were perhaps um, an immigrant from the Low Countries or Germany yourself, or just liked that particular style of cooking. Um, thank you for listening, and uh, I have recorded this piece on the Portable Antiquities Scheme. Uh, most of the Portable Antiquities Scheme is small metal finds from metal detecting, but I'm hoping that more people will put on their random pottery finds as well and there's a link to have a look at that record if you're interested as well. Um, so thank you for listening and I hope that 
more little parts of my German pig will appear from Hampshire's soil in the future.